About a year ago, I needed to share the items in my Amazon shopping cart with someone. I quickly realized I couldn't just copy my shopping cart URL and send to that person. And I kid you not when I say I had to manually send the link to every item in my cart. <laughs> In this video, we are going to build a Chrome extension that generates a shareable URL for your Amazon shopping cart. The extension will also support updating your cart and generating a new URL in case you want to share with different people. If you enjoy this type of content, please do me a favor by smashing the like button and subscribing to the channel. Let's get started. Let's start by creating a folder called Amazon Cat Share and open this folder in VS Code or your preferred editor. Next, we are going to create a file called manifest.json and we are going to add a couple of required fields instead of this file. We'll add a name and description for our extension. Next, we'll specify a version number for the extension we are building. Um, for the purpose of this video, we're just going to go with version 1. The next important field is the manifest version, which indicates the Chrome extension APIs that will be available to us during development. So keep this in mind if you're watching this video in the future and the manifest version has changed. This is pretty much the basic configuration we need in the manifest file to load our extension in the browser. To load the extension, we visit the extension page in Chrome and toggle the developer mode and click load unpacked then we select the directory of our extension now that the extension is running let's spin it to the top of the browser at the moment our extension doesn't have any icon so let's do that next on my desktop i have a folder containing the icons we need for the extension links to the icons can be found in the description box below so we can copy this folder into our project then back in the manifest file we are going to instruct it to load these icons if we go back to the browser and give the extension a refresh, we can see the icons. Next, we are going to override the default pop-up that shows up when we click the extension. In the manifest file, we add a key called action, which is an object and within it, we are going to add another key called default pop-up and point it to popup.html, which is a file we will have to create next. You don't have to name this file popup.html, it could as well be anything you want. We're gonna add just a basic HTML to see the results in the browser. So whenever we make changes in our extension project, we go back to the extension page and give our extension a refresh. And we can see the pop-up HTML shows up when we click the extension. Just like a traditional web page, we can also add CSS and JavaScript to this pop-up HTML. So keep the focus of this video on building the functionality of the Chrome extension and not making it too long. I have designed a simple HTML page on CodePane and added it to our pop-up HTML and CSS file respectively. Links to the updated files can be found in the description box below. Now we can see the updated pop-up page. At the moment, the elements on this page don't do anything. So back in our popup.html page, we are going to add a script tag and link to a JavaScript file called popup.js, which we are going to create next. Instead of this JavaScript file, we are going to create a page for the copy URL button. Then we add a click event listener on the button and do a simple console.log. If we visit the page and click on the button, we don't see the log in the console of the current page. This is because extension pop-ups don't have direct access to the current page in which they are running. For now, to see the log, we right-click on the pop-up page, click inspect to bring up the developer tools and click on the console tab. To read and write content on a web page, we are going to add a new key in our manifest called content scripts, which is an array of objects that specifies which page the script we add is going to be able to read and write from. We have to specify the matches key to instruct the content script to which page or URL the script can be injected into. For now, we use the all URLs value, which pretty much allows us to inject the script into pages matching all parameter scheme defined by all URLs. Then we add a JS field that specifies the location of the script we want to inject into the page. And next, we create the script and add a simple console.log to see it in the browser. If we refresh the extension, we'll see that we get an error. This is because we made a typo in specifying the content script, which should be pluralized. 
and also the JS field is an array instead of a string. Let's also take this opportunity to add a CSS to the content script to see it in action. To demonstrate the CSS is also injected into the page, we'll set the style to turn every text on the page red. If we refresh the extension and visit the page then reload, we can see the log from our script.js show up in the console. We can also see the style we set in our script.css has been applied. Back in our project, we'll delete the script.css as we don't need it. We'll also remove it from the manifest file. At the moment, the content script is injected into every page the user opens. Even if we navigate to a page other than Amazon Shopping Cart page, we can still see that the extension requires full access. And this is because of the all URLs value we pass to matches. So let's scope this to just Amazon Cart page by specifying a regex pattern. This will match our website with slash cat slash view.html in the URL. We are going with this approach because Amazon domain extensions are different in every region and the match pattern doesn't allow us to match for a domain extension. Another viable option would be to specify a list of all Amazon domains in different region. But I didn't want to do that because as we'll see later, we are going to programmatically limit the functionality of this extension to only Amazon Cat page. If we refresh the extension and visit a page that is not Amazon Cat page, we can see the extension doesn't have access, meaning the content script has not been injected into the page. On Amazon Shopping Cart page, however, we have full read and write access. Next, we'll learn how to broadcast a message from popup.js and listen for the same message in our content script and respond back to the caller. To broadcast a message from the extension page to our content script, we need to get the active tab from which our message is going to be sent. We can do this by using chrome.tabs extension vi to query for the active tab in the current window. And in the callback of this query, we get all of the tabs returned to us. And if there are no tabs for some weird reason, we return from this function. Otherwise, we send a message using message. The first argument to send message is the ID of the tab we want to broadcast the message to. This will be the first item in the tab's result that was returned from the query. Next, we specify a message to broadcast. The data type of the message could be anything you want, but in our case, we are going to stick with an object with the type of the message and a payload if we have any data to send to the receiver. And lastly, if we get a response back, we log it to the console. In our content script, we'll listen for broadcasted messages by adding a listener to chrome.runtime.onMessage event. When a message event is fired, we get the message, the sender of the message, and a function to send a response back. We can determine how we want to respond to the incoming message by checking message.type. This is because the original message we sent is an object with a type property and a payload. If the incoming message type is hello, then we are going to console.log the payload that was sent. And then we send a response back to popup.js. And next we reload the extension and go to Amazon Cat page. And then we click the button to send a message from popup.js to content script and respond back to popup.js. Now that we understand how to do cross messaging between the two environment. Next we're going to see how to reuse code between the popup and content script. Let's create a file called utils.js. Then we would extract the code to send a message from popup.js into the utils file. In the utils file, we'll export an async function called sendMessage. Then we'll paste the code we copied from popup.js inside of this function. From the tabs of query returns a promise if we don't specify the callback. So we'll wait for the query to resolve. And once we have all the tabs, we'll promiseify the rest of the code by returning a promise. If the tabs array is empty, we reject with an error message. And we'll remove the adcoded message with the argument this function is expecting. If we get a response back and the response contains a payload, we are going to resolve with the response.payload. This makes it easy for the consumer of this function to not have to call response.payload every time. And if there is no response, we reject with an error that there is no response. It's possible that the extension encounters some runtime errors, so we will undo that by rejecting the promise with the error message. In popup.js, we would import send message from utils. It's important to specify the extension of the file we are importing from, otherwise we will get an error. And next, we'll clean up the boilerplate code we used previously to send a message. And we'll use the new send message imported from utils and pass in a message we want to send. Send message returns a promise, so we can call dot then and console.log the result. We'll also undo any rejection that occurred in this promise by catching it and logging it to the console. 
If we reload the extension, visit the page and check the developer tools of the pop-up HTML, we'll see an error that we cannot use import outside of a module. So let's fix this by going to the popup.html and in the script tag we will add a type of module to popup.js. Back on the page, if we check the developer tools of the popup HTML again, we'll see that the error is now gone. Next we'll see how we can import the same utils module in our content script. First, let's add utils.js as a web accessible resource in our manifest. Using web accessible resources key, which is an array that accepts a list of resources that we can scope to different URLs. We can think of a web accessible resource as a global resource that is available to all parts of our extension. Then we add the utils.js file as a resource using the resources key. Lastly, using the matches key, we'll make this resource available on all URLs. This is because we are sharing utils.js between our pop-up and content script. So we still want to make utils.js available to pop-up.js even when the content script is not injected on the page. In our utils file, let's export our message type as a constant called hello. This is so we can have a single source of truth for our messaging event types so we can reuse between popup.js and our content script. Back in popup.js, we will import the hello constant we just created and use it in place of the literal string. To import utils in our content script, we have to take a different approach. Remember when we imported utils in popup.js and got an error? And the solution was to add type module to the script in our popup.html. We can't add the type module because our content script is defined in the manifest. So our solution would be to import utils asynchronously in our content script. In script.js, we will add an immediately invoked function expression, which get called immediately the content script is injected into the page. Then we'll use chrome.runtime.get URL to get the fully qualified URL for utils.js. Then we'll log into the console to see what we get back. If we reload the extension and visit the page that matches our content script, in this case Amazon Cat page, in the console we can see the fully qualified URL to utils.js. If we click the link, we can see the content of the file. Now that we have the full URL to utils, we will dynamically import it into our content script. Then wait for the import to resolve before we proceed. Once more, let's see the result of our import in the console. And we'll see the result of the imported ES module in the console. Now that the module is imported correctly, we'll declare a top level variable called utils with its default value set to an empty object, which value we get reassigned when the import is complete. We are doing this because we don't want to move the unmessaged listener into the immediately invoked function, which is an async function. The only drawback is we don't get code completion since we are dynamically importing the module. Let's replace the string literal with utils.hello and we'll update the shape of the message we send back to an object that contains the payload. In the browser, we can test that everything still works the same. I've updated the utils file with new messaging event types. The cat key is going to be used as a key to store the cat ID in the user's browser. Its value is chrome.runtime.id, which is a unique ID generated for our extension. Next, we have a function that returns a random string that we are going to use for generating a new cat ID. The send message function remains the same. I've also removed the hello message we were responding to in our content script. In popup.js, we are querying the DOM for all of these elements. Next, we add a click event listener on new cat ID button. When a button is clicked, we generate a new cat ID using the random string function from utils.js. Then we update the cat ID text on our pop-up page with the new cat ID. Note that we didn't have to pass any value to random string. This is because we specified the default length of the random string return to be 7. Let's move the logic to update the cat ID text into a function called render cat ID. The function is going to accept the value that we are going to use to update the cat ID text. And we'll update the code inside the click listener to use the render cat ID function. If we reload the extension and click the new cat ID button, we can see that a new ID is generated every time we click it. Let's disable the button to generate a new cat ID if we are not on Amazon cat page. 
we are going to send a message called features disabled from popup js to our content script to ask whether we should disable this feature or not we are doing this because the content script runs in the context of the web page so it can access the url of the web page and let us know whether we are on amazon cat page or not we would send a message type of features disabled without a payload we would expect a boolean response for whether we should disable some features or not and we would also handle any error that may occur in utils.js, we are going to add a new function called is not Amazon cart page. The function returns a boolean by checking in the location of the web page and running it through a regular expression to see whether we are on Amazon cart page or not. Back in the content script using the switch statement, whenever the incoming message is of type features disabled, we are going to call utils.is not on Amazon cart page. And if we are not on the cart page, we reply with a payload of true. And if we are on the cat page, we reply with a payload of false. In popup JS, we'll do a console.log to see whether we are on Amazon cat page or not. If we reload the extension and check in the console, we get a no response error. This is a result of us rejecting in send message when we don't have a response payload. But we do have a payload. The reason is because when we are not on Amazon cat page, we are sending a payload of false, which causes the if condition in send message to fail. To fix this, we remove response.payload from the condition, since we expect every response to contain a payload, so only checking that there is a response before we resolve the promise is sufficient. If we reload Amazon Cat page again and check in our pop-up page console, we can see the log that we are on Amazon Cat page. If we visit a different page though and check in the console, we don't see the log that we are not on Amazon Cat page, instead we get an error. This is because our content script is only injected on Amazon Cat page. So there is no way it's going to receive the features disable event we sent from popup JS. This makes things a lot easier. So if we ever get into the catch block, we know the content script was not injected on the page and we can disable the features. The only feature we are going to disable is generation of a new cat ID by removing the click list now on the cat ID button. But first let's move the code to generate a new cat ID into a function called undo new cat ID button clicked. Then we will define a function called disable features. Instead of this function, we are going to remove the click listener on new cat ID button. We would also add a class on the new cat ID button to visually show that the button has been disabled. And here is the CSS for the disabled class we just added on new cat ID button. Now we can call the disable features function in the catch block. If we reload the extension and visit a page that is not Amazon cat page, we can see that the new cat ID button has been disabled. And if we go to Amazon cart page, we can see that the button still works. We probably don't need this now, but let's also call disable features if we ever get a response back that we should disable it. Next, let's look at how we can save the generated cart ID in the user's browser. The first thing we want to do when our extension is first installed is to find an existing cart ID or add a new one in the user's browser and update the pop-up page. On the Chrome Storage Extension API documentation, the first thing we need to do to save some data in the user's browser is to request for permission which we can add in our manifest file. Next, let's check the documentation for how we can store and get data from the user's browser. We can use the chrome.storage.sync API to set and get value from the user's browser. In the utils file, we are going to export a storage helper to simplify the usage of these APIs. The storage helper is going to be an object that exposes a set and get method. The set method is going to be an async function that accepts a key and value. Then we paste the boilerplate code to store some data in the user's browser. Sync.set returns a promise if we don't use the callback. So we return the promise and remove the callback function. Next we specify the key and value by passing in the argument this function is expecting. To get back data from the user's browser, we call story.sync.get and pass in a key or array of keys and on the result that we get back, we have to do result.key to access the value. In the version of get method we will be exposing, we are going to simplify the usage of this API. Let's define an async get method that accepts a key. In the body of the function, we return the result of calling story.sync.get, which again is a promise if we remove the callback. Then we remove the key array and pass in the argument key that we are expecting. Because sync.get requires that we access the value by looking in result.key, we will do the work in our helper here and just return the value instead. Back in popup JS, we will import the storage helper that we just created and define an async function called find our update cat ID. The function is going to accept a cat ID and first attempt to get the cat ID. 
using the casket we specified in utils.js. If we already have a cat ID stored in the user's browser, then we update the cat ID text on our pop-up page. Otherwise, we store the cat ID that was passed to this function in the user's browser. And then we update the cat ID text on our pop-up page. Let's move this function below the render cat ID. Now we can call find all updates cat ID function and pass in a new cat ID using the random string function. If we reload the extension and check the pop-up page, we can see that a new ID has been generated. We can confirm this by checking that the initial ID set in our pop-up HTML page is different from the one we see in the extension pop-up. At the moment, if we click the new cut ID button, the generated ID is not persisted. Back in pop-up JS, whenever the user requests to generate a new cut ID button, we are going to store the newly generated ID in the user's browser. If we reload the extension and click on the new cat ID button, you can see that all the tabs are using the saved value in the user's browser. Let's create a function called init to put all of the functions that run when we open the pop-up page in one place. And then we will call the function. At the moment, the copycat URL button doesn't do anything. So back in pop-up JS, we are going to add a click event listener on this button. Inside the handler function, we are going to get the current cat ID and send the message of type copycat URL to our content script. We would also add the cat ID as a payload to this message. Then we'll log the response we get back from the content script and also undo any rejection we get by logging into the console. In the content script, we add a new case in our switch statement to undo incoming message of type copycat URL. If we receive a message event type of copycat URL, we are going to call a function called getCat. This function is going to read the content of an Amazon cat page by querying the DOM for all of the cat items and returning them as an array of object that we can send to the server to persist. We will define the function called getCat and query the page for an element with this class. Every cat item on Amazon cat page has a class of SC list item content. I know this because I've already played on the website for a while. You can also test the same query by going on Amazon cat page and pasting this query in the console. Query selector all returns a node list so we'll convert it to an array. And if the cat is empty, we return null from this function. Otherwise, we loop through the array using map. For each cat item in the array, we are going to query for the information we are interested in. Again, I know these selectors exist on the page because I already played on the website for a while. Then we return the transform data from the map function. And lastly, we return the cat data, which after the transformation in the map is now an array of object. Now that we've implemented a get cat function, let's see the results in the console. If we reload the extension and visit Amazon cat page, then we click on the copycat URL button, we can see the result of get cat in the console. We are going to soon see how we can send this data to a backend server that is going to save the cat and generate a shareable URL for us. Let's create an async function called save cat that is going to communicate with the backend server to save the user's shopping cart. The function will accept two arguments and ID to uniquely identify the cat and the shopping cart items. Then we'll send a post request to save the user's shopping cart using the fetch API to this URL. In the body of this request, we are going to send a stringify JSON of the ID and cart. This API will return a JSON response and because we are using the fetch API, we have to first return res.json and then we chain another .den call to get the actual response. We will log the response from the server and also catch any error that may occur and log it to the console. Back in the switch statement where we are handling the message type of copycat URL, we will call safecard to save the user's shopping cart on the server, passing the ID which is on message.payload, which if you remember we specified when we call send message from popup.js. And lastly, we will pass in the shopping cart items. 
Now if you reload the extension and visit Amazon Cart page, open the extension pop-up and click on Copy Cart URL. We see the response from the server logged to the console. We also get an error which comes from a typo we made in our catch block, so let's fix it. Let's take a look at the response we got back from the server. The server returns the cat's resource we just created, its ID and a shareable URL that we can paste in the browser to see the result. On this page we can see all of the cat items on my Amazon account. We can also click the links to visit the product page on Amazon. If I go back to my Amazon cart page and delete an item, then open the extension pop-up and copy the cart URL again without generating a new ID. The server responds back with the same URL as the previous because the cart ID didn't change. Now if we visit the same URL again, we can see that the item I deleted on my Amazon cart has been removed from this page. Let's wrap things up. Now that we know that the server returns an object containing a URL, we can then return data.url in our promise. Once we successfully saved the cart item on the server and got a URL back, we'll call storage.set to save the URL in the user's browser. Let's create a new key to store the URL in the user's browser called cart URL key. The key will use the same chrome.runtime.id, but we'll distinguish it from the cart key by concatenating the value of runtime.id with iPhone URL. Next, let's modify story.set helper to return a promise of whatever value we just saved in the user's browser. Back in the content script, we finish saving the URL in the user's browser by passing in the cat URL key and the URL sent from the server. Note that we are returning you to the story.set, which returns the promise of the URL that we just saved in the user's browser. We will then reply back to popup.js with the shareable URL, so it can be copied into the user's clipboard. Lastly, whenever we respond back to a message in an asynchronous function, we have to return true to notify popup.js to wait a bit longer for the response. It's possible that the getcat function returns null. If that's the case, we don't want to make a network request to the server. Instead, we will attempt to get the cat URL from the user's browser and send a reply back to popup.js with the URL. Lastly, we also return true in this block because we are calling reply inside of story.get which is also an asynchronous function. Back in popup.js where we sent a message of type copycat URL, we are going to remove the console.log and replace it with a function called copycat URL to clipboard, which we will define next. Let's define an async function called copycat URL to clipboard, which is going to get past the cat URL from send message below. If we didn't receive any cat URL, we throw an error. Otherwise, we'll copy the cat URL to the user's clipboard using JavaScript clipboard API. Once we finish copying the cat URL to the clipboard, we'll then add a class of animate to the cat ID text on the pop-up page. If we reload the extension and visit Amazon shopping cart page, then bring up the extension pop-up and click the copy cat URL button. We see the animation happen on the cat ID text. If we click the button again, the animation doesn't play. This is because the animate class is still on the cat ID text. To remove the animate class and have it play again anytime the user clicks the button, we are going to listen for the animation end event on the cat ID text. And in the handler function, we are simply going to remove the animate class. If we visit Amazon shopping cart page now and click on the copy cart URL button, we see that the animation plays every time the button is clicked. Let's update some of the items in our cart. If we open the extension pop-up and click the copy cat URL button, the cat URL would be copied to our clipboard and we can paste it in a new tab to see the result of our updated shopping cart. If we need a different shareable URL with different items in the cart, we can generate a new cart ID. Once we are happy with the update we made to our cart, we can click the copy cat URL button again to generate a new shareable URL. If we copy the new cat URL in our clipboard now into the browser, we can see its content is different from the previous URL. That's it for this video guys, let me know in the comment section if you would add any feature to make this even better. Again, all the links and resources used in this video will be in the description box below. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.